Watch an expert at work, that mothership is mine. Oh, for God's sakes. Is that it? Hi and welcome to Astronical. In this episode we're going to add the mystery ship. Uh, that's the ship that goes across the top. I'll quite often refer to it as the mother ship even though it is officially known as the mystery ship. So if you want the code for this, if you pop along to extronical.com and the links are in down below, you'll find part 7, the mother ship. And all you need to do is to click on where it says expand code and you'll find the entire code you just need to paste into your Arduino. If you've been doing this as you've been going along with the other episodes, you have your OLED screen all set up and ready to go. So it's just a simple matter of copy and pasting this code and then pop it into your IDE and upload it and you'll have the current level, current Space Invaders with the mothership or mystery ship. Um, to do the copy and paste, all you need to do is to click there where it says copy and then do a control C and you'll copy all that code in and then you can pop it straight into, which I've already done, straight into your um, Arduino IDE here. So if you have a quick look at the screen, I'll just reset it. And that's where we're left off, with the invaders going across the screen and we can uh, destroy them, etc, etc. Uh, so we want to add the mystery ship. So the first lines we want to do are look at our lines 15 to 18 where we define some things for the mothership, mystery ship. Um, I should have by rights, yes, called it mystery ship, but I called it mothership and then I've done so much code with it. I haven't bothered to do like a fine replace for the word mothership for mystery ship. Um, but yeah, we define some graphics heights, which is four and 16. So it's got a height of four pixels and a width of 16 pixels. Um, it's speed going across the screen, the higher the number, then the faster. Basically, it's how many pixels it's moving at any one point in time. So it's every sort of game click, it's going to go two pixels at a time to the left or the right. Um, the chance of spawning, um, 250 seems about right. Uh, the less chance, the higher, sorry, the less chance has a spawning. Basically, it looks like the number one. I can't remember exactly where I'll look at the code in a minute, but if by random chance, so if it, if it does a random number out of 250 and that random number is one, I think, or something like that, then it'll spawn the mothership. And that gives what feels about right for the game. You may want to tweak that a little bit yourself. In the actual arcade game, it wasn't quite that random. It, 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 players could influence it if they knew how the game was kind of working. Um, but I didn't implement it like that. So we go down and we look at uh, line 53 or so let's have a look down there we go We've got the mothership's graphics defined there which not going to really talk about and then if we move on down we've got um using the alien structure but we've used the, if you look we've used the alien structure here for all our local aliens and uh, the structure is here doesn't have much in it uh, look, it's there. We have an explosion counter for an exploding, and otherwise, basically, this holds their coordinates. So again, the mothership's just gonna have some coordinates, and an explosion counter for when it blows up. So it's got that same alien structures as all the rest. If we move on down, look a bit. Got some more settings. So we've got the mothership speed. So the speed we've said set to two. You might think, well, okay, we've got a, a constant, a define of two. Why would we need to then store it into what is effectively a global variable called mothership speed? It's because if it's a 2, it'll be moving left to right, so we've got a positive value, but we need to be minus 2 if we want it to go from right to left across the screen. So we do a random selection we'll look at later on, and if it's whatever, a 1, then we set it to go left to right, so it'll be a positive 2, and if it's a 0, for example, can't remember, we'll look at the code in a bit, it'll go um, right to left if we set mothership speed to minus 2, so we set it to minus that defined from earlier. Um, the bonus is whatever... The bonus can be 50 points, 100, 100 points, 150 points, or 300 points. And we do a random factor on that as well. Again, in the actual arcade game, that was influenced in a, a relatively complex way. I think it was something like, if you counted the, how many times you'd fired, and on the 24th firing, um, I think the mothership come on, 
and then if you hit it, you would get the 300 maximum, something like that anyway. You'd have to look on the internet. But there was ways of influence the money ship bonus, not in this game. My implementation uses a simple random number. Uh, so whatever that is, we store it in there so that we can display the mothership bonus that you've got, um, whether it's 50, 100, whatever it might be. So we can store that um, ready for displaying for, I don't know, two or three seconds, whatever it is, on screen. And then obviously it's added to your score when we come to the next episode and we'll deal with scoring. Um, this is the position of the bonus, um, which can be a little bit different to the actual um, mothership X position, because the mothership X position can be a little bit off screen. So if it is, we don't want the bonus to be a little bit off screen. We'd want that to adjust that a little bit so that it was fully on screen. So we, we allow it to be stored on an individual basis. Usually it'll be at the mothership's X position. Now, as the mothership's X position drifts off the screen, we need to just adjust that a little bit if need be. Um, the mothership bonus counter is just how long the bonus is left on screen, as it says there. Let's have a look down. What else have we got? So we altered the physics routine a little bit. So we've got alien control, and now we've got this one, mothership physics, which we'll look at down here. Um, so it's, it's a reasonably long routine, but it's, it's split into two parts. If it's active, so if it's active, we're going to do this bit here. So if it's active, then we're going to move its X position by whatever the speed is, which could be a plus or a negative number, depending on what's going left to right, right to left. And if its speed is more than zero, we know it's going from left to right. Then we check if it's off the right-hand side of the screen. If it does go off the right-hand side of the screen, that's this bit here, if it does go off the right-hand side of the screen, we mark it as destroyed. No player points awarded. Uh, it's just marked as destroyed, so it's gone, ready to be spawned again. Uh, if it's not got a mothership speed that's positive, then we must be going then from right to left. And we'll make a simple check here as to whether it's gone off the left-hand side of the screen and again, make it destroyed if it has done. So if it isn't active here, so if that wasn't active, then we're gonna go into this code here. This is the if it's not active. So we want to try and spawn the mothership. So we look at if it's got a spawn chance is one, so yeah, one out of 250. You've got to remember that doesn't sound much like it hardly ever spawn, but you've got to remember the, the game is running at many, many cycles uh, every second. So 250, as I said, seemed about right to me. Um, obviously, it's at your own discretion to change that and play about with it till the mothership appears more or less if you don't feel that's quite right. So if we do get that one, that random number of one out of 250, then we set the mothership as active. Yep, it's going to be on screen. And then we need to set a random direction, which we do here. So if it's a one, then we're going to go from, we've looked at this, we're setting if it's a one. So if that's a one, we're going to actually set its X position to the screen width, which means it's going to be set at the right hand side. So if it's a one, we're going from right to left. And if you look, we set here minus mothership speed. So mothership speed is minus mothership speed. So it's going to go moving right to left. And we set its X position at the right there. If it's not a one, then we're going to go left to right. So um, the exposition is basically just off the left-hand side of the screen. So we're setting it to um, basically the mothership width is 16. So we're taking it to minus 16, which will just be just off screen to the left, just. And in the next game click, it'll appear slowly on screen going across left to right. And we set the mothership speed just a positive number, which would be two for what we've set it for so far. Um, moving on past that. What else have we got? So we've got some collisions. We've got to check that one we've done already in the, one of the previous episodes. And now we're going to check for collisions with the mothership, which is basically just the player's missile on the mothership. So we've come up here for mothership collisions, which almost fits on one screen. It's just off the bottom there. You can see you're not really missing anything there. So on this bit, we go, uh, if the player's missile is active, yeah. Otherwise, there's no point in making a check. If there's no player missile that's active, then there's no point in making a check for a collision. And the mothership is active. Again, if the mothership's not active, there's no point in checking for a mothership collision. So if those two things are active, then we could have a collision, which we check here. If there's a collision between the mothership and the missile, so if that returns true, then the mothership is exploding. You've hit it, so we set that status exploding, then the exploding graphic will appear. And we set the explosion graphics counter to the standard explosion time, whatever that might be. We've discussed it in a previous episode. And we also obviously mark the missile as destroyed as well. Uh, your bonus is then set here, so we pick a random number from um, 0 and 3. So when it says random, a random number and 4 here, 
it means up to, but not including four, but starting at zero. So you've still got four values you're checking for there between zero and three. So if it's a zero, it gives it 50, 100, 150, and finally 300 there. All have an equal chance of being true. Um, then we set the mothership's um, XORD. Uh, oh, sorry, I was, yeah, I'm just looking at what I'm doing here. Sorry. Uh, the mothership bonus X, where we're going to display the bonus score. So the bonus that we've got, this is where it's going to display it. And generally, it's set just to the mothership's X position, which for whatever, probably about 90% of the time, that's fine. Um, but if that exposition happens to be more than 100, then there's a chance that that bonus is going to be half on, half off the right-hand side of the screen. If so, if it is more than 100, then we'd set it to exactly 100, just to make sure it's nicely snugly on that right-hand side. And same again, if it's less than zero, because the mothership's gone a bit off to the left as you just hit the sort of the right-hand side of it, we don't want the bonus to be half sort of off the left-hand side of the screen. So we set it to zero, so it all displays there on that line. And we set the amount of time that's going to be displaying that bonus on the screen to whatever bonus time you want on there. And let's have a look. What else have we got? So scrolling down to 448. So we're in the display routine now. Uh, so this is where we display all our graphics. So if the mothership bonus counter is zero, then we need to display the uh, bonus. And that just does it here. So we just print the actual score out at whether the mothership X position we've just set just earlier uh, and we decrement the counter um, when that counter as long as that counter is more than zero they'll keep on displaying this but eventually it'll get to oops let's just undo that but eventually this counter because we're decrementing it here will get to zero and it will no longer display the bonus scroll a little down so this is where we actually display the mothership so the mothership if it's active so it's not been destroyed then we just draw it there with that line there. If it's not active, then it's either not on screen at all or it's currently exploding. Um, so if it is exploding, then we draw the um, explosion graphics you can see there. And we do it um, in a, for a random position here, for random width, sorry. So we set it at the X and Y of the mothership. And we move across, we look, we're going a little for loop going across. We're going to put some explosions across the entire width of the mothership randomly at these positions. It gives a nice sort of like explosion effect for the width of the mothership without having to create a separate explosion graphics just for the mothership. So we're using the same small explosion graphics that we've got for the space invaders, but we're randomizing the width a bit and we, we're sort of progressing it across the width of the mothership there. So we get a nice explosion effect. And again, we've got the explosion graphics kind of just being decremented. If it gets to zero, then we just mark it as destroyed. The only other thing we've got to really cover now, I think, is uh, the initialization of the aliens. So in the initialization routine, we just set the mothership's Y position to the top of the screen. We set its X position as a start to just off the screen. And we set it to make sure that it's destroyed. So we'll have a look at the actual game in play. We can see that we've, we've got, we'll just reset that. So I've got the old game there with no mothership on. So I'll upload this one. So I'll control U to upload. And um, we've got a problem, it says it's probably got the wrong COM port set. So yeah, I need to set COM port, COM4. And just try again. Okay, so we're uploading. And I'll shoot a few aliens while waiting for mothership to appear. Okay, so let's have a go. So there's the mothership. See if I can hit it this time. Oh, I did. And got a 50 bonus. I think in the actual game, the mothership appeared about every 25 seconds, 24 seconds, something like that. And there it is. We've just missed that one. I'll probably try and. Hang out in the middle a bit, see if we can actually pick up on. There we go. Ah, miss. Let's get that alien there. We've got some room to actually shoot. It's not easy. I'm trying to use just one hand. So I put the other hand. You can't see the screen that easily. I don't think. We'll try. So move across there and shoot and miss. Shoot and miss. Oh gosh. I am so rubbish. Shoot 
and miss again. This is making for a non-dramatic gameplay. Where is that mothership again? Come on, we don't want to wait ages. There we go, shoot, and got it. And a hundred point bonus. You get the idea that um, the bonus appears for a second or two uh, in a position where the actual mothership was. So we'll just shoot it down to one alien that's left. In fact, we could get rid of them all, to be fair. This game doesn't have any levels yet. We haven't said anything like that. If you look, it's not even speeding up the actual last alien, which we'll do. Ah. You can see why I actually prefer programming games to um, play in them. Yes. It's to be very good. Come on, one more. Let's get the last one. See if we can get a big 300. So I think the, the one in 250 chance is probably about right for the actual game where it's about one every 25 seconds is. There we go. And 150, that'll do, that'll do me. So I'll finish on that. Um, the next episode, we'll put some scoring on there. But for now, that's it. Remember, like and subscribe, and see you next time.